This is Dr. Ben White with the Rational Wellness Podcast, bringing you the cutting edge information on health and nutrition from the latest scientific research and by interviewing the top experts in the field. Please subscribe to the Rational Wellness Podcast on iTunes and YouTube and sign up for my free ebook on my website by going to drwhites.com. Let's get started on your road to better health. Hey, Rational Wellness Podcasters, thank you so much for joining me again today. Uh, We're going to talk about posture again, and it's such an important topic because it affects so many factors in our overall health. And um, as a chiropractor, I constantly see patients every day who come into the office and, and they say, Doc, why is my back hurt? What is, why does my neck hurt? I didn't lift anything. I didn't do anything. And so in so many of these cases, posture is the um, unthought of underlying cause. And as a, uh, somebody who's into functional medicine, always believe in trying to get to the root cause of problems. And the same thing for chiropractic. We, we can't just uh, correct their neck and back pain with a drug that's going to relieve the pain. We've got to try to get to the underlying cause. And um, I personally have found that uh, uh, poor, bad, inefficient posture is a uh, major factor in uh, not only the cause of their pain, but also in their inability to heal properly from the pain and in the fact that the pain is likely to come back. Um, By the way, all of you who enjoy the Rational Wellness Podcast, please go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a rating and review. That will allow more people to find the Rational Wellness Podcast. And so our special guest for today is Dr. Steven Weiniger. Steve is a posture expert. He's the author of Stand Taller, Live Longer, tremendous book, creator of the CPAP training program for professionals, helping people check their own posture with his Posture Zone app that you can get on your phone. And he's the chief posture evangelist of May. And, And May is posture month and he's the um he's the he's the head of the posture month organization anyway steve thanks so much for joining me today ben, ben thanks for, thanks for having me i appreciate it and the chief posture evangelist label came when we decided to do a public health initiative for cpep certified posture exercise professionals and the label hallelujah <laughs> Well, it's because basically I'm going around and I'm talking to media. There was just a really cool thing that came out on CBS yesterday uh, about about an interview that we did with them talking about posturing. I feel like I'm evangelizing. And I'm Jewish. I mean, I should not be doing evangelical things. But it's true because people, it's something everyone knows about, but people don't stop and really look at. And so my job becomes making people talk about it. And that's why... We've expanded posture months, to, but to not just CPAP, but for anyone that's working with posture to be able to um, take a picture, of, to, to be able to offer the public a picture of their posture to create awareness of what your posture looks like, because it affects your health in a tremendous way. Cool. So um, can you tell us what are some of the negative consequences of somebody having poor posture or inefficient posture? Well. There's two sides to it. One is the health consequences, and the other is the personal consequences. Beginning with the health that is the one that's most important, even though it may not be the one that's most emphasized, it affects back pain and neck pain tremendously. A recent study found that 89% of primary care physicians considered posture to be one of the primary causes of back and neck pain, which is not surprising, because if your body is not aligned, there's more mechanical stress on joints especially if you're living like that all the time. But there's other issues as well, because when your body is folded, it can affect how well you can breathe. It affects how different visceral organs work. And things like this don't occur quickly. But especially if you want to get to the root cause of problems, if someone's living with their body folded and they can't take a deep breath, there's been a lot of research that shows breathing is really important for your health. Um, If you don't breathe, bad things happen. 
And it's important to breathe the right way, as, as I've learned, uh, because I was always a mouth breather and I uh, recently, in the last six months, learned how to breathe through my nose with the help of a breathing professional. It makes a huge difference. And there's, there's, breathing, there's breathing professionals that work with posture as well, because it's not just a reflex thing. When your head goes forward of your torso, it changes the muscular relationship in the front of your neck going to the mandible, the, the, the jawbone. That affects the opening for the air coming down into the lungs. And it's easier to breathe with the chest than it is to breathe with the abdomen or the diaphragm. And once you develop that habit, it becomes like any habit. It's easy to move that way. Like, try this. Cross your fingers like this. Look at which finger is on top, the left one or the right one. Which one's on top? Yeah, when you're looking at your finger thumb, which thumb is on top? Oh, the right one. Okay, cross it the other way. Put the left one on top. If I ask you to cross your hands, things like this a thousand times, how often would you do it this way? Most people, you, if you've worked with it, you're good. Most people that will do this will find that well, you they see, have I, a pattern. I off, so, um, so actually, left, and, and, left and golf on top is, is my golf grip. So. In that case, you're, you're, you're not usual. But most people that do that find that they've My got a bias. My wife is always so reminding me that I'm way. not normal. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're better than normal. You pay attention to your body. That's the point. The, the, once your body learns to move in a pattern, you keep on moving that way without thinking about it. And that strengthens some muscles, stretches other ligaments, and your body literally folds into that pattern. You think you're moving one way, but a camera proves that you're not moving that way. And that's why taking a picture so that you can see how you're standing when you think you're standing tall is one of the first cues to building posture awareness. So um, it, since you brought that up, how do people become aware that they have bad posture? Is it simply because they have neck pain and they go to a chiropractor and, and that chiropractor tells them they have bad posture? I, I really don't like the the phrase bad posture. It's because no one's posture will, unless someone's body is perfect, their posture is not going to be perfect. Your posture is bad if you're having some symptoms from it, and that that's that that's for certain. But how about even if, if you're not it, having symptoms? How about if we call it inefficient posture? Because isn't the key to posture resisting gravity, and we can't resist it efficiently if we have a certain posture inefficient is a good way is a, a good way to look at it especially from a sports point of view the way that we talk about it with people is weak posture because if your posture is inefficient your body's going to be weak and it's not about being as strong as the strongest person in the world or as tall as the tallest person in the world because that's probably not most of our genetics it's about being as tall as your body should be as strong as your body should be for, the, for what you're doing. If you're working your body inefficiently, your body's gonna get better moving inefficiently and that makes problems. So, so the key to posture is just taking a picture of yourself and measuring, not making a pathology of it, not making it bad, not making it a, a problem, but making it just, when I'm trying to stand tall, this is what I look like and looking at it and then coming back next year and comparing it again and measuring your body and something that you're aware of. And if you see your body folding from year one to two to three, and you're looking more and more like an old person, you're gonna start feeling like an old person and having pains like an old person way before you should be. So let's say we call um, good posture, optimal posture, right? How about strong posture? Okay, so let's say we call it strong posture. Uh, can you say approximately what percentage of the population has weak posture? In our, in our world, there's yes. been this great invention that it re I don't know that it was made by chiropractors, but if you wanted to invent something, to have a device that you could put in front of people and then have them spend half their day hunched over with their <laughs> shoulders rounded forward so they're typing on something, you'd have a hard time devising that business model, but it's been great for chiropractors because we end up seeing and helping so many people walking around in pain. In our society, I'd say 90 plus percent of people are walking around with posture problems. 
One thing that I've noticed is when I travel, I'll see families with kids. And sometimes the little girl looks like mom and the boy looks like dad. And usually when I used to see people like this, the kids had good upright, good, good upright erect posture, and the parents were a bit more slumped forward in general. Now the kids look worse than the parents. This is an epidemic going on in our society, and it's getting worse. So this is a negative health consequence of uh, cell phones on top of some of the other health consequences. I was just listening to another podcast on my way in here, and they were talking about how loneliness is a uh, uh, parameter that increases your risk of early death and chronic diseases. And the more people spend on social media, uh, the more lonely they get. So you spend all this time uh, interacting with other people, but not in a real way. So you end up uh, decreasing your health as a result of that. And that's, uh, I completely agree with that perspective. One of the, one of the things with that is People spend a lot of time trying to curate the perfect image on social media so that they look really good. And when they then compare themselves to other people that look better, and so it becomes a competition of how well can I artificially make myself look good? And I'm comparing myself to other people, and it's like a world full of Barbies of people shaped in ways that no human be being is shaped. Uh, whereas if you and I are sitting together and we're being comfortable and we're opening up to each other, that's a different kind of friendship than occurs online. Yeah, yeah. And that that, that creates this uh, unrealistic uh, body image that people have when they see these people on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and stuff having these ridiculous looking bodies and then they feel worse about their own because they, they know uh, nobody can look like that. And those are not real images, unfortunately. And one thing that I've become more aware of uh, personally is the old custom of breaking bread with people. You don't, we don't talk about that, but when you sit down and you eat with somebody, it's, just, it's a more intimate thing where people don't show videos of themselves eating. They show <laughs> videos of the meal. Because, it, because I can curate it, I can make it look right, I can put the glass to the left of it, I can arrange the social with just so, so it looks like the food thing yet of perfection. Whereas a video of somebody chomping away at something, that doesn't look so good. Because that's a more openness of how people truly are. And when you sit down and have a meal with, with someone, if you like them, after you, after you come away and you said, yeah, we, we had breakfast together, we had dinner together. And that's the, the, the saying a long time ago was people breaking bread. Yeah, interesting. So, um, how's how's uh, tell me about your app that lets people uh, be able to take a picture and get a better sense of uh, how 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 good or or uh, how strong or weak their posture is. The Posture Zone app is a free app that's on iPhone, iPad, and Android, and it's a way for everybody to take a picture of themselves and measure where their head, where their torso, and where their pelvis is in space over where they're standing. And those are the four posture zones. And it's not about trying to pathologize something with, with this is normal and this is not normal. I mean, if somebody is five foot, five foot five for, for male, and the normal population is five, seven to six feet, does that mean that the person that's five foot five is abnormal? Of course not. It means that that's the way that person is, and there's a normal, there's a, there's a population demographic. Normal means different things, and you don't want to confuse a normal population demographic with what's normal for that individual. If someone's five five, if they're standing tall, they can have strong posture. If someone's six feet and they're slumped over down to five foot ten, they've got horrible posture. So it's not about stand, it's not about being tall, it's about standing taller. And for that, the, the direction of that is aligning your head over your torso, over your pelvis, over where you're standing. The more those four posture zones are vertically aligned in a line, the taller the whole system is, the taller the person is. The more the person is flexing forward, the shorter they are. And what the posture zone app does, it lets you measure the degrees of deviation from vertical of those four posture zones. Do you, do you have it on your phone right now? Can you show us real quick how that works? Sure. 
I can I can show you on my phone. If this. So this is a, a an app. It starts out as a free app, and then there's advanced features um, that you could purchase on. Um, you can put it on your phone, your iPad. You can put it on your phone, iPad. It's twenty nine dollars for the pro version, which is for professionals. If you're a professional watching this, you want the pro version because it'll let you take uh, take a comparison picture of somebody and compare it in a report over time. If you're a regular user, it'll, 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 the app will let you take pictures over time and compare them. So you can just flip back and forth to look at your pictures and you can see the number, but you can't create a report and you can't keep things in cases to work with to work with people. So it's very much designed to give the consumer or the health enthusiast the ability to check their own posture and posture of friends. But if you're doing it professionally, it costs 29 bucks, but it's a one-time thing. It's not an all-the-time thing. And uh, the reporting is, again, of the angle of the deviation. It's not saying this is normal, this is not that normal. That's like a fear-based marketing thing that I, I don't care for. Hey, you ever, you, ever, picture, you, ever, you ever done a study to validate this, maybe with patients after whiplash? Working on it. Okay. Uh, there's, there's a couple of people that are working working on things that, that are working on, on exactly that. And you can, and there's, there's been other studies that have been done that, that point to the lack of validation of some other things that a lot of people talk about and that the most promising way of assessing posture is the head, torso, and pelvis over the gravity line, which is exactly what we do. Dolphins did a really nice uh, study of that, and that was the only thing that correlated with back pain, uh, whereas things like high shoulder or high hip really didn't correlate well. It was just over mechanically, if you put inefficiently, the more everything is stacked up, the more efficient mechanical advances is going to be, the less energy is spilling, the less strain there is on muscles and joints. Okay. Go ahead. So if you want to take a look take a look at it, don't this is my office is a mess, but if you can don't you, know if you can see hold, yeah, there right there. Good. Okay. okay. So basically, oh I've got a great idea. Don't go away. Okay, you're gonna bring somebody somebody in to help demonstrate it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Harry in. Okay, so, hi, hey, Harry. Harry's my posture guy. <laughs> okay, we're gonna see if we can do this. So basically, you want to take a picture. And notice when I rotate this back and forth, the line turns green. Okay. In the middle, when the line's green, it's level. Since my screen is not level, this is gonna be a weird picture. But if I put Harry between those two lines, I can take a I can bracket him between those two lines. And I've got a grid in the background that if I was smart, I'd have it set up where I could show you that grid, but that's not today. That's not going to happen today. <laughs> but professionals, okay. professionals will use a grid. And if I took a picture of Harry, and this is not going to be nearly level because I'm not that coordinated, but if I want to take a picture of Harry, I get it. I got it. Okay, this is far from perfect, but I can then take a, I can, I can, I don't think you can see this, but I need to set it up for a side view or a front view. I can take a side view. I can then move the brackets to bracket the head over the torso, over the pelvis, over where the feet are standing. And this is not well placed because I can't do the sideways very well, but that can then check that and it'll then measure the degrees of deviation. Oh, the head okay. over the feet, the torso over the feet, and the pelvis over the feet. So it's just measuring how the body balancing and what the body is doing to be vertical. And this is what the free version does. If I wanted to add other, other lines, let's say that I'm a pitcher or a golfer, you can add another line. I can call that a golf line. And then I'd be able to make a line between my shoulder and my front foot, for example if I wanted to add that measurement to see how my body's aligning. When I think my shoulder's right over my foot, if it's really two degrees off and I start working on it and then it's one, and then it's one degree off, it's going in that direction. It's a way of benchmarking and the accuracy of your perception of where your body is to the truth of where your body is. Cool. And you can, and you can then, if you want to save it, and I'll just put it into a case, and hopefully this is nobody that I want, don't want to share with you. Within that case, I can look at an image 
and compare Harry today to Harry yesterday, or in the pro version, I can generate a report to compare that to prior images. No, sorry, I can, I can compare that to prior images and the backwards, there we go, where I can basically hit the little check mark. You can see that and get a report, and then I can generate that report. And the report disappeared. I can't do this backwards very well. Okay, there it is. And I, I can generate that report, and that report then has those images as well as the deviations of where the body is in space. And the cool part for consumers, if you're looking for a professional near you, on the bottom there's a locator for a CPAP where they can find somebody that's in their area, and now you know where I live, but where there's a CPAP near them, and that is someone that, if they wanna work with a posture professional, that can take a picture of, a posture, of their posture and help them to do exercises to strengthen their posture. And that's the idea behind posture month, teaching people how to become aware of their posture, A's. A's awareness. Next part is C, control. Do exercise to strengthen your posture. And professionals that work with people from a clinical point of view especially, use strong posture exercises to strengthen how people move. Other things like yoga, Pilates, are also what are called controlled motion exercises, and they can help posture. But the strong posture exercises have the advantage of being able to be very, very targeted to, to help someone's weaknesses and strengthen their weaknesses, especially when there's been a, a problem that needs any kind of rehab. You know, another thought about using this is, and I've just started to incorporate this app, is um, insurers, third-party payers want to see objective measurements of uh, the improvement that we achieve with our treatments. And we know our patients feel better, but simply having a patient who says, you know, I'm in pain and then say, now I feel better. That's not very objective. Of course, we use these zero to 10 pain scales that the patients fill out. And that's a little bit of objectivity, but it'd be nice to have something like this that we could include in a report um, to either an insurer or on a personal injury case um, to show some objective improvement. So I think this is pretty cool for that idea. I've had, I've, I've personally had, in, had um, uh, adjusters that we've worked with and they said, you know what, when you showed me the picture of what the person looked like the first time they came in and what they looked like a few weeks later and then what they looked like a few weeks late after that, it makes it very real. People, unlike online text, that's not real. A picture of you and I, when you're seeing somebody talking, that's much, that's much more real. Yeah. And you think have someone standing against an objective, that's more real. Okay, so once uh, somebody identifies that they have poor posture or once a uh, practitioner, you know, maybe who's gone through your program, identifies somebody with postural issues, um, how do you go about correcting those? The first thing you do is you take a picture. So you benchmark where you're starting from because it's not necessarily correcting, it's strengthening. My, my best and your best are almost certainly going to be different because we've had different genetics and we've treated our body differently along the way. And your body is not going to be balanced in the exact same as somebody else's. But having an awareness of how you're balancing at the beginning, to strengthen balance, you want to strengthen each of what are called the three elements of balance. How your body is aligning, how your body is balancing, and how your body is moving. And so basically, those three words, balance, alignment, motion, or BAM are what we talked about in my book, Stand Tall a Live Longer. And these strong posture exercises are what CPEPs and other professionals teach their patients and teach people, and there's also trainers and massage therapists that teach people how to do postural exercises. So Posture Month, what, there's, there's a number of share images we're putting out every day. And for the, each week, we're going to be focusing people on one exercise. So week one, we're focusing people on a, an alignment exercise that's really easy. Go to the wall, 
walk, so your back's against the wall. And you remember when you were in school, they told you that you should be able to line up your shoulders, your, your feet, your shoulders, your feet, your, your, your butt, your shoulders, and your head against the wall and be straight. Did they, they have that when you were in school? Um, well, I remember doing that for the air raid drills. <laughs> okay, same, same, same thing, same thing. But one of the things that most people really now will protect you if, uh, if a nuclear bomb, um, it, you know, strikes near your school. Yeah, in my school, in my school, they had us hiding under the desk. So, uh, <laughs> oh, okay, like that's going to help you. But, either. but the the what does help you is connecting your perception of your body with how it really is. So, going to the wall, taking stepping one foot away from the wall with your feet parallel, leaning your butt against the wall and your shoulders against the wall, and then really lock in, look straight ahead, keep your head level, and. Try to keep your head level, that's the must, and move it back towards the wall. If your head can't touch the wall and keep it level, then that's saying that you've got some distortion where your head, torso, and pelvis aren't lining up. Because if you take your feet away, you should be able to align head, torso, and pelvis unless there's something holding something forward. And the, the strong posture exercises all use what's called must versus try cueing. The must is, in this exercise, keep your head level. If someone says, yeah, I can touch the wall, but the head's not level, then not doing the must. And if you can't touch the wall, the exercise is quite simple. Go as far back as you can, but keep it level. So keep your head level as you pull it back. It's similar to the turtleneck that some people teach from an exercise point of view, but it's more effective because if you take your feet away from the wall, you're reducing some of the impact of the psoas on, on, the, on the upper lumbar and lower thoracic spine. So it makes it easier to isolate the root cause for that particular posture distortion. And so practice and keeping your head level, pushing it back, and doing that with your breath. So doing it with what we call five slow breaths. Breathing in, letting your head come forward, breathing out, pushing it back to the wall. And you'll notice by the third or fourth, you get a little bit more play if you're doing it right, where you're stretching the tight link of the chain. Doing that twice a day for a couple of days, you may find that you start to find it easier to keep your head level, which is what we're trying to do, to open the body up, which opens up the second week of Postuma, which is the first balance exercise. And the first balance exercise is holding your best tall, strong posture and balancing by lifting one leg up so your thigh is parallel to the ground and holding it for five slow breaths and then repeating it on the other side. And doing that, we can just three times a day, just dialing in to standing tall and you can't see me now, but I'm lifting my leg up because if I lift my leg up and my body is going like this and I'm twisting, I'm not strengthening the muscles of my posture. You want to first do alignment so you have an awareness of what the standing tall feels like and then hold that feeling, lock that awareness in and then challenge it by lifting one leg up. And as you know from a rehab and exercise point of view, the way you strengthen something is by challenging it. That's the second week. Do that a couple of times a day, second week. The third week of Postum Month, we'll be coming out with the first motion exercise, sitting on a ball. And just like you would sit at work, sitting really tall and trying to only move your pelvis. So instead of having the focus be the head torso posture zone, we're moving the focus back down to the torso pelvis posture zone. The key is moving the ball, making three circles to the right, three circles to the left. But the, there's two musts here. One must is don't move your knees. The second must is don't move your torso. So if you're sitting tall and you're not moving your knees and your torso, the only thing left to move is your pelvis. It sounds really easy, but it's way harder than it looks. And especially when you try to make a circle to the right, many people that have any kind of an issue will quickly notice that their circle isn't round, that there's a flat spot in their motion where they're not able to control something accurately in that arc. And what they'll also find that if they, could, if they make three circles to the right and three circles to the left, the inaccuracies of motion, the, the kinks, the things that are locked, that they didn't know were not moving, are not the same on both sides. 
And if they're not able to be recruited and used when you're really focusing on it, when you're not focusing on it, when you're doing a bunch of other things at the same time, you're not going to be using it. And that's why the must versus high protocol becomes so powerful to isolate and strengthen the weak link in each individual's kinetic chain. Uh, what do you say to patients who say, you know, why do I need to do these dorky exercises? I'm already going to the gym and I'm doing squats and deadlifts or, you know, I'm doing one of these other exercise programs where I'm lifting all these free weights. Um, you know, why do I need to sit on a ball? Because exercise is good, but exercising effectively is far more important. If someone, I, I remember going to the gym and seeing guys that were bench pressing 250 pounds and they were doing it by lifting their head up, ro rolling their shoulders in and bouncing it off their chest. And yeah. they're saying, I'm, I'm benching 250. And especially those guys, if you try to go over to them and say, try doing this with tight form, their response is, I can't lift as much. And the only thing that's important is how much I can lift. Of course. Well, and, and that's not good. Well, actually, if, you, if you're a chiropractor and you want to take care of patients, it's great for business, <laughs> but it's loud in the people's bodies. All motion begins with your posture. All motion ends with your posture. And that's why the awareness part becomes so important. If in your awareness, you think standing, stand, standing tall is standing like this, when you exercise, all your exercise is going to be like that. If you're a golfer, if you golf, Golf begins with the address position, where you're getting set up, standing tall, and then you're, that's what every pro that you've ever spoken to tells you to do. If when you think you're standing tall in address position, you're really adaptive in some subtle way, like those silly ball things that we just talked about that you, that you said, then you're going to be taking those asymmetries into whatever that larger motion is. The only way you can strengthen the subtleties is to focus on only them. When you're doing a big macro motion, you can't, you can't be aware of those small subtleties. Your body thinks in whole motions, not individual muscles. So focusing on the subtleties has such incredible power, both from a pain point of view, as well as from a performance point of view, as well as um, how other people see you. Because so, the other part that we didn't talk about is when you're standing tall, people look at you better. So are, are people actually making themselves worse by exercising in poor posture and reinforcing uh, that posture? I'll go back to what you said at the beginning. When, 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 you, when a patient comes in to you and they say, Doc, why am I hurting? I've been doing, going to the gym, I'm doing all this stuff, but this happened, what happened? Because what you think you're doing may not be what you're really doing, and everything that you do always begins with the posture. So that's why if you want to exercise effectively, you want to begin with effective posture. And there's been a number of studies that have demonstrated that training bodies to move towards greater symmetry with greater accuracy makes a big difference in back pain. In fact, if you recall, last year's uh, guidelines for the care of both acute and chronic low back pain from the American College of Physicians said that surgery, a lot of times not good, opioids, not good, NSAIDs, things like Advil are not as highly recommended as they used to be. And they should do alternatives like spinal manipulation, which chiropractors have been saying thank you very much, but also motor control exercises. That's exercise where you're looking at the subtleties of motion. That's precisely what the strong posture exercises are designed to do. Okay, so do you, what, do you tell somebody, let's say somebody comes in and their posture is pretty bad, um, do you tell them to stop all their other exercise until they can uh, correct their posture, or do you tell them maybe while they do their exercises, try as much as you can to get into a better posture? And the better posture is what they're learning to feel when they're doing, when they're doing the strong posture exercises, especially if they're working with a CPAP. That because if they're coming in clinically, you want to be not creating more pain. You want not creating more tissue damage. So you may possibly pull back from some of the exercise, and you may increase others of the exercise depending upon 
the person's clinical story, the person's exercise, and their functional ability. That's why the, the must versus try protocol has become so powerful because it lets you tailor it to their functional ability. The, t the exercise is, is, is a test of, of what they can do functionally, which you're then teaching them how to do in a way to strengthen the weak link in, their, in that kinetic chain. So in general, if you're exercising, you want to work out quickly how to get the most benefit out of your exercise. And that's, that's what a professional can help you do. Now, now you talk about strengthening and balance, but what about stretching, you know? So let's say you have this sort of, you know, rounded shoulder forwards head posture that you see in a lot of people and certainly strengthening the rhomboids and the middle and lower trapezius and, you know, some of the intrinsic neck muscles are important, but don't you need to stretch out some of these shortened uh, muscles in the front as well? <clears throat> Absolutely. And that, that goes back to the point at the beginning. It's not one thing. It's everything. It's like which tire on the car is most important, the left front or the back rear. If you're going 60 miles an hour on the highway. You don't want any of them to blow out. And if one blows out, the whole system doesn't work the way it's supposed to. In terms of correction, very, very commonly, someone's going to have a short pec, more likely a short pec minor, coracobrachialis, which is the muscle underneath that is another really, really common shortness that's missed, that, that's missed because if you think about it, if there's different layers of muscles, which there are, if the, if the superficial muscles are tight, then other parts are gonna move differently. If the short muscles are tight, the ones that are closer to the center of axis of rotation of each joint, then nothing around that is gonna be able to be moved and you can stretch the superficial muscles out all day long but you've got to also get to the deep ones. That's why the patterns can be really different for different people. And with what you just did, it's not just, it's not just opening what's up, up on front, it's simultaneously strengthening what's in back. But it's not just the front and the back, because when you did this, you also unfold the torso pelvis a little bit. You lean torso back. So if there's an imbalance between torso and pelvis, then it's going to keep on pitching you forward, and you can try to open this up, but you're going to have to do something else to compensate. Posture is a whole body phenomenon. It's not just your head. It's not just your back. It's literally how you balance your body, and that's why the balance exercises are so key to strengthening posture. And what's the role of chiropractic in this? Tremendous. Chiropractic's main focus began with spinal manipulation, which is working on the segments of the spine the vertebra of the spine to restore motion and to allow more normal neurologic function because the, the spine houses the spinal column and that connects the brain to the muscles and then the, by the nerves. And if those are not moving well, if there's not accurate information coming to the brain, it means the way that you think you're moving is even less likely how you're moving. From a biomechanic perspective, if there's a locked link in a chain, if my hand should be moving like this, and my fingers are not moving, it's gonna move like that. That's gonna put more stress on one joint, more exercise on one joint, and less on others. The same thing happens in the spine where one spinal segment is working more, breaking down more, getting more exercise at one level, and less at others, and that imbalance then drives how everything else is moving. So the combination of chiropractic spinal manipulation with strong posture exercise is like this. Great, because what for those of uh, the audience who aren't really familiar with what chiropractic does is one of the core factors, uh, treatments of chiropractic that really no other professional really does effectively is the manipulation or adjustment. And, and it sounds like your understanding is similar to mine, is we're trying to find those particular uh, joints in the body, whether they be spinal or extra spinal in the shoulders or elbows or knees or wherever, and making sure all those joints are moving freely in all those different directions that they're supposed to move in. So, for example, your spinal joints are supposed to bend forwards and backwards and side and rotate. And we've got to make sure that they're doing all those motions so that you actually can attain the type of posture and, and maintain that type of posture. And 
Exactly. And I talked about the spine because that's, you said where chiropractic began. But from an effective postural rehab perspective, you also want to be a, a good chiropractor to me addresses all the links in the kinetic chain. Because if, you're, if you've got a problem with your big toe, if I drop a cinder block on your big toe, your posture when you walk is going to get a heck because it's going to hurt and you're going to move adaptively. So a good chiropractor should be able to address <clears throat> all the links of what we call the kinetic chain to teach the body how to move symmetry, how to move with greater symmetry. In other words, a chiropractor unlocks motion, stimulates neurology to function more accurately. But if you don't retrain the body to move more accurately, it's going to keep on going back to the old pattern. Chiropractic unlocks and restores motion. Strong posture exercise retrains that motion. It fit, they both fit together. Um, one more question. Is there a role for nutrition in promoting posture? Oh, absolutely. Uh, if your body doesn't have the materials that you need from a biochemical basis to function, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to function adaptively. Everything from enough water, which is something that is one of the underrated issues with a lot of people with low back pain to enough calcium to other things like functional, functional medicine that you can use to stimulate or to decrease how different things are functioning to address it. So, I mean, our bodies are not just biomechanical. It's not just nutritional. It's both working together as well as, 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 biopsychosocial or attitudinal or mind or emotional, however you want to phrase it, you, your headspace, your attitude will affect your posture and affect your health and affect your biochemistry. We're all together. It's mind, body, and spirit, which is kind of where chiropractic began once upon a time. And it's cool seeing more things going in that direction now. There you go. That's kind of an evangelical uh, saying almost. Oh, wow. And uh, from the posture evangelical. <laughs> I'm going to end with a prayer here. <laughs> no, you know, it's funny because, because as you noted, I've got, I wear a number of different hats and I've been on different boards and I, I didn't want it to sound stuffy. I wanted to make it more of a fun thing to engage people. And that was literally put out there as a kidding around. And some people started sort of phantom it around and became kind of what it is, but it's true. Posture can make a big difference in your life. And the, the posture month ACE framework, be aware of your posture, take control, engineer a, str a, a strong posture environment. And next year, recheck it, see how you're doing. And all the time, do basic posture exercises. If you have a problem, see someone that can help. And the posture zone app lets you check it and lets you find somebody. Cool. And so for our listeners who want to get a hold of you, what's the best way for them to contact you or uh, get a hold of your book and learn about your programs? From, from the public point of view, um, Stand Taller, Live Longer is the website for the book because that's the name of the book. Uh, from the public point of view, bodyzone.com is where public information is. From the professional point of view, uh, posture practice is where we teach people how to be sleep apps to strengthen people's posture. And from everyone's point of view, download the Posture Zone app. And, and, and all of those sites have ways to contact us that they can get a hold of us. Sounds great. Thanks, Steve. Keep spreading the Thanks. word. I, I appreciate it. I very much enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay, I did too. Talk to you soon.